right, we will go ahead and get started. It's 9.01, just so I can honor everyone's time. Um, I am Miss Gardner. I am the assistant principal here at Stonehouse Elementary School, and this is our virtual kindergarten information session. So just a few things before we start. Miss White is very sorry that she can't join us today. She had a, another meeting that she was pre-scheduled for prior to this meeting, but she does wanna make sure I just welcome everyone and says that she is excited to meet a lot of you soon. So in previous years, this event was scheduled for in-person when we invite families and students to visit the school. Um, during this time, they would hear about our kindergarten program, they would hear about different experiences that the students would have, such as story time, they would take a tour of the school, they would have a small snack, they would have a little ride on the school bus. However, as lots of you know, due to COVID, we just want to make sure that we're keeping everyone healthy and safety. So today's Zoom session is just going to be on Zoom. We'll give you some information just to let you know about pre-registration process. Um, and then we'll answer questions at the end. So before we do get started, um, as we go through this presentation, feel free to use the chat feature to ask questions and then we will try to get through them at the end of the presentation. So um, if you can just look at your chat button, um, it's hard for me to look at the chat as I'm speaking, but I do have some um, other folks here who are here to assist with the chat as well. Um, some of the folks that we have here with us today, in addition to our amazing kindergarten team, is we have Miss Ian, our school nurse. We also have Miss Payne, our school registrar. And then we also have our amazing kindergarten team with us here. Now, I know that all the schools will probably say this, but we really do have the best K team in WJCC. So they are an amazing team. They've been working together for a bit and they are here just to make sure that your student has a really great experience in our school and enjoys coming to school each day. So some of our K teachers that you will see coming into the new school year will be Miss Allen, We'll have Ms. Bonner, Ms. Cross, who is gonna be soon to be Ms. Feruli. Hopefully I'm saying that correctly, Ms. Cross, I apologize. We have Mrs. Patton and Mrs. Vickerton, and they are also here and they are happy to answer questions as well. And they're kind of watching the chat. So getting ready for kindergarten. So one of the first steps that we're gonna wanna make sure to do is completing the registration paperwork and a lot of the different forms that are gonna be necessary to start the enrollment process. So it does seem a bit lengthy, but all the requested information is needed just to ensure that your child has a smooth start to kindergarten. So in order to pre-register online, the first step is just to determine that your child will be five years old on or before September 30th. So as you pre-register online, the system does permit uploads of some of the requested documents. So uploading the requested documents prior to attending your scheduled in-person appointment at our school will expedite the final steps of the registration process, but it's not necessary. So we can definitely do it for school um, for you at school if you need to just come in and do an appointment for it. So we are required though to see and verify the documents listed on the screen. So please plan to bring them with you on the day of your appointment. So again, some of those forms that we're gonna need are two proofs of residence, a certified birth certificate, evidence of adequate immunization, and then a completed Virginia physical examination form. Um, and then on the slide as well, we have some different documents that you can also bring if needed. Um, some other folks who are on here that I didn't mention are our school counselors, Ms. Gilbert and Claire Brantley. Um, they offer a lot of different services as well, and they are a huge support as our new students come in. So they will offer um, individual counseling, whether it's short-term solution-based, just to help with social, emotional, and academic concerns. Um, they will offer group counseling. They have classroom counseling once a month, sometimes it's more where they actually go into classrooms and they will um, do lessons with the entire class. Um, some other helpful tips just to think about and that they're help, happy to help with as well is just car line practice independence, getting in and out of the car, especially this year as we have our new car line, just helping students become a little bit more independent. 
um, thinking positively, being positive, and then they just, here's their contact information as well, um, just to reach out for any concerns. Now, the great thing about our school counselors is that they will follow the students um, the entire time they're at Stonehouse. So for example, Ms. Gilbert right now works with students in K2 and 4, and Ms. Brantley works with students in 1, 3, 5. However, next year they'll flip-flop, and so they'll continue to flip-flop over the next five or six years just so that they can really get to know your student and build a relationship with your students as well. And again, their contact information is here as well in case that you, in case you need it. So before school begins, so over, over the summer, it's going to be important to take time with your child to start preparing for a successful transition to kindergarten. So make certain that they know their first and last name, their home address, um, drive by the school just so that they can see the new school, practice walking to the bus stop, get connected, just so that you'll be aware of important news and events. And we will also be communicating specific times and dates with you to invite your child to attend an informal meet and greet later with the teacher, um, just to help with their transition to kindergarten. Um, so these are just a couple things that might be helpful before your student does um, come in. So if you take a look, just making sure you have their emergency contact information and just update it throughout the year. Um, you know, notify the school re um, regarding before and after school child care, any special needs that you may have. Um, bring them to the summer meet and greet if you're able to. Again, that's just a great way for you to be able to meet the teacher and for the student to meet the teacher just so that they feel a little bit more comfortable as they begin this transition. Um, begin talking about school, just make it a positive, things that they're excited and looking forward to it. Um, again, teacher, child, their first and last names, walk them to the bus stop, as I said. A big help will be writing their name inside their coats, jackets, lunch boxes, any of their belongings. Again, just because we know that they can be forgetful sometimes. And it's easier for us if we do find things um, left in centers or at recess or even on the bus just so we can make sure they get their belongings. Um, purchase solid toed shoes and sneakers for daily wear. And then just again, especially this year, but always just the importance of hand washing. All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about some of the requirements for school entry. So um, state law requires that your child is immunized and receives a comprehensive physical exam before entering public kindergarten or elementary school. So the parent or guardian will complete part one of the form and part one is gonna be all the student demographic information, any known health conditions, regular uh, medications taken by your student, the name and contact information of your child's pediatrician, um, dentists and other providers or specialists that they may see. Um, your child's provi medical provider will complete part two, the physical examination and part three, which are the, like the shock records. So the form must be completed no longer than one year before your child's entry into school. So the new school year begins on August 30th this year. So you all can find the school entrance form on the division website, or you can call and request a copy from our main office. Um, and then I can also at the end, or if um, Ms. Pat or someone, you can put the link in the slide as well if needed to the, to the form. So this is just a screenshot right here of part one of the school entrance health form for display. Um, so this right here will have your demographic section, the health conditions, important medical contact information. So again, part one will be completed by the parent or guardian. And so this will actually be the only section completed by you all. The rest of the forms that I'm gonna display will actually be um, completed by your medical provider. And then looking at this form right here, this is also known as the shot record. Again, this is to be completed by your healthcare provider or the health department. And so at the bottom, you'll notice it's highlighted. We do need that signature um, with the date at the bottom. So you all, again, do not need to complete section two. This will need to be completed by the health provider. Uh, the other part that we will need is part three, the physical exam. And so again, this part will also be completed by your healthcare provider or the health department, again, with the signature and date. So again, you all will not need to complete section three. 
And again, if you all have any questions about some of these forms right here, um, we do have Ms. Painter, Registrar, and then we also have Ms. G, our school nurse too. So again, as you have questions about any of this, feel free to place it in the chat. And again, we will look at some of these questions at the end to make sure we get them answered. All right, so next we have transportation. So bus transportation is available to all kindergarten children living within their zone school of attendance. So you can identify your child's bus stop location and pickup time by visiting wjccschools.org. Um, there, it's usually available in late August. So we do have a free app called Here Comes the Bus and they use GPS data just to show parents and guardians where the bus is and how close it is to your child's bus stop before and after school. Um, so again, this information will typically be available in late August. Um, you can also receive push notifications or email messages when the bus has arrived at school, it's near the child's bus stop, it's been substituted, or when we have other important bus announcements. If for some reason you do have difficulty with this information or there's an error, please call transportation. Again, the number is um, on here so you can reach out to them in case there is an issue with the app or with any other transportation concerns that you might have. Um, but we do encourage you just to use this communication resource. We also really want to encourage families to allow their child to ride the school bus to and from school and just start this practice on the first day of school just to help with that transition. So we know that students thrive on consistency, knowing the routines and expectations. And just so that you all are aware, it's important to note that bus drivers will not release a kindergarten student off the bus in the afternoon unless the parent or assigned adult is present and ready to receive the child from the bus. So in a case that um, a, a bus driver is dropping your student off and there is no adult there, they will return the student back to school. And so then we will give you all a call just to come and get them from school. So it's important to make sure that an adult is at the bus stop um, each day to get the students on the bus and off, off the bus. All right, so lunch and breakfast menu items for the upcoming month are usually available by the last week of the previous month. So you can also visit the school website or there's a QR code right here that you can also scan. Um, one thing that is, we can note is that if your child does have a particular food interest or limited favorites, uh, we suggest reviewing the menu with your child beforehand just to help them with the decision making process. I know this year looks a little bit different with COVID, but typically we would have a line for students to go through and just kind of knowing what's available will help them get through the line. Um, if there are any documented food allergies, again, make sure to share that with the school nurse just so we can make sure it's on file and the classroom teacher is notified as well. And so breakfast does cost $1.40 and lunch costs $2.75. The school and the division send important reminders and alerts via phone calls, email, and text messaging. So um, one thing that is helpful is to text yes, text yes to 67587 to receive alerts on your personal cell phone. So you will get these right away just whenever the school division does have important updates. So we recommend signing up for this service again, just so you get any type of alert from the school division. So one um, thing that we have parents do is to sign up for Parent View once the student is officially enrolled. So we encourage you to register for Parent View when, where you can log in anytime and anywhere with an internet connection. And this right here will just give you access to grades, attendance, assignments, announcements, um, and just any other communication with the, the teacher. So we definitely recommend again for you all to sign up for this as soon as students are registered. All right, so what we would like for you all to do just as some next steps is to visit our school website or call the main office to schedule an appointment to come to the school and begin completing the registration process just so that your child is enrolled for school on August 30th. So again, we are taking um, appointments so you can definitely call the school or again, Ms. Payne is on here and she's a, a wonderful resource just to help you with the registration process. All right. So for the first day of school, our school provides name tags. So please make sure that your child wears it the first few days of school. So this will help the staff assist with some of the younger students. And again, it's very important to start on day one with building positive routines. 
Consider again, allowing your student to ride the school bus, um, discuss how to remain seated on the bus, and remember that an adult must be present at the bus stop for the driver to release the student. We can't reiterate that enough. We do have our social media accounts. So as we come to a close this morning, go ahead and follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, um, YouTube, just so that you can continue to get important information um, about the happenings in the school and within the school division. So we really love sharing some of the positive things happening in our school and we want you to see these great things too. And again, just as a way to get your student excited. Okay. So right now we will take about five minutes or so to address any questions in the chat. Or again, if you all have any questions, we can open up the floor. Miss um, Patton, were there any questions in the chat? Sorry, it's hard for me to. That's okay. There is, um, there's a question about, um, from Miss Wallace Conyers, she's building a house that won't be ready until early October. So they have a contract, but aren't able to produce a second document with an address. She's asking about alternative options. Okay. Ms. Payne, do you want to jump in on some other options that um, families can use if they're having a house that's built? I know there's a couple other documents that they can use um, as well. We understand you'll get a purchase agreement. You have 60 days from the first day of school, which would be August 30th. So if your house is built within, in that case, it'd be the end of October. If you provide the purchase agreement with your name and the contract and all that and the signature pages, I can, you, can, you can enroll your child. Um, <clears throat> and we understand that once you make settlement, then you would provide me another document showing the closing statements, again, with your name on there, the address and the signatures. And at that time, you would have your, like Dominion hooked up and then you provide the Dominion bill. So in order to start the registration process, all you have to do is provide the purchase agreement. And then, but please know you only have 60 days. Um, when 60 days hit and you have not moved into that, that area to that home, then there is a chance that if you're not zoned, like where you're living, like you're living in an apartment and you're waiting for a house to be built, then you would have to, um, you could go back to August 30th and they would charge you for attending the school. So make sure that when you get that house being built, make sure you're in that time frame. If not, let's say you know your house won't be built until November 15th, then you will want to register your child in the zone you are now, and then you can transfer over to us. Okay. Um, Elizabeth, no date has been set yet for open house or meet and greet. We're still working out the details of that because it's gonna look very different than it has in the past. So once that date is set, we will get that information out to everybody. Um, there's a question about restrictions on what can be brought for lunch and snacks. For example, are classrooms nut free? Um, Ms. G, do you wanna address that? Yeah, good morning, everyone. I'm Stacia Guillen, um, also known as Nurse G. Um, just a little background, because I like to meet you guys in person, but I know this is weird. Um, I'm a certified nurse practitioner with over a decade experience in the ER urgent care as a nurse practitioner and a combined 15 years experience as an RN. So if you have any questions, please do not hesitate to reach out to me, especially during this crazy COVID time. So this is an easy question. We are not a nut-free school, but it is very important that if your child has a nut allergy, especially one that requires anaphylaxis or epi due to anaphylaxis, that you let me know because I like to keep that here in the clinic. That way I can put signs up in the classroom anytime there is an allergy, uh, a nut allergy or any type of severe anaphylactic allergy, I go into the classroom and educate the students in the importance of making sure that they keep their snacks separate and not obviously putting someone with a peanut butter sandwich next to someone with a peanut allergy, although we are social distancing. Um, so as far as that, we are not a nut-free school, um, but we are very aware of who has the allergies and we try to kind of coordinate that appropriately. Um, but I will say that we do not allow outside treats to come into the classroom, mm -hmm. meaning it's Johnny's birthday and there's cupcakes. Unfortunately, we just, we can't do that at this time. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 
Um, and just to piggyback off that too with the nut free items, um, typically in a normal school year, we do have a designated nut free table in case there are allergies. And I know this year, again, um, students are eating lunch in the classroom, but I know teachers are aware of the nut allergies and they're making accommodations when the classroom as well. Um, okay. um, this presentation is being recorded. Um, so this will be posted on the school division website for um, viewing for you all to review and then for folks that weren't able to be with us today. Um, there are two bus questions. One is related to the school district code for the bus app. I'm not sure what that is. Does anybody? I see to? somebody else, sorry, I just see somebody else answer. I didn't have it handy, but somebody just has the district oh, perfect. code in the okay. chat. Um, but I'll have to double check as well. Um, I, don't, I just don't have it handy okay. with me. Um, and then a second, like a follow-up question for transportation. Can a child catch a bus at the new home location or are we required to transport her to school? I think this is from the same family that's building the house. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, I'm thinking if you're out of zone right now, you're gonna have to end up transporting the student is again, if, they're, if they don't have the bus information ready, but um, Ms. Wallace Conyers, I'm happy to follow up with you individually for, for a specific question just with the new home. I have your name down here so I can make sure to follow up with you. And then Nurse G, do you wanna handle how masks and social distancing will be handled next year? Yeah, um, I would love to have that answer. <laughs> so I, um, I, I can tell you how it's handled now, as we know this is a moving target as far as a continual change in numbers and vaccines and variants and you know what we know today could change tomorrow. Um, that's why I really want and urge you guys to please reach out to me if you have any questions as things start to change. Mm -hmm. um, as far as what it looks like now and my anticipation for next year is that masks are not going away, especially as our littles um, are not more than likely not going to be approved to get vaccinated or, or the option to get vaccinated at that time. So what it looks like now is masks are worn throughout the day. Um, we obviously, you know, take into consideration, you know, <clears throat> specific mask breaks as it pertains to the littles and anxiety associated with it. And we're working, like I said, it's a, it's an evolving thing, um, but masks will be worn um, more than likely as they are now. And the social distancing, we follow CDC guidelines very close. So Right now, the kiddos are sitting three feet apart um, based on the current CDC guidelines because we do know that transmission, transmission between um, children in schools is very, very low. We know that most of the transmission occurs outside of the schools and among family. So I'm sorry, I can't really answer that question now, but just know I will always have the accurate information. <laughs> Um, school supply lists will be provided also on our website and then they're usually in stores around town. There's a question about kindergarten supplies. So if you go to Walmart or Target, um, every school um, provides a list and most of those places have them right at the entry um, for you to see. Usually that'll happen like midsummer um, into August. Um, sorry, let me... Um, can you share the number to text yes to receive the school message? Just type it into yep, the chat. There it is. Yep, there you go. Um, okay. Someone asked if the kids will be four or five days. Um, I believe right now they made the announcement that five days a week is what we are slated for at the moment. Of course, things I guess could change, but right now they're saying five days a week for the fall. And then Roberta, can you clarify again how you'd like families to schedule an appointment for registration? Okay, what happens is, is everything is done online. So if your first part, step one, is for you to go to our uh, WJCC website and on there it'll have kindergarten online registration. Just click on that and finish and submit it. Once it's submitted, it will come to me. I review it and then I will give you a call and we will set up an appointment for you to come in to provide the documents you need to bring, as well as there's additional paperwork you would need to sign. Perfect. Um, our school day hours are 8.20 to 3.08 to 3.15, depending on if you are picking up or if your child's riding the bus. Mm -hmm. um, 
And that is, I believe, the last question I see in the chat, so. Okay, well, perfect. Well, if you all do have any other questions, again, feel free to give us a call at the school, um, our email addresses, um, and we look forward to seeing all of you soon and chatting with you soon as you re register your kiddos for kindergarten. It's an exciting year. So thank you, everyone. Everyone has a great day. Thanks. Bye-bye.